Hey, welcome everybody. My name is Cesar Delgado. I'm one of the pastors here at Familia Church. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope that you guys are having a good night. <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about or follow up on the sermon that Gilbert uh, Delgado, the pastor, gave this Sunday. He pretty much was talking about, you know, God's presence and how we can get closer to God. So I wanted to, you know, have my own thoughts on it. So I thought I'd share that with you today. Um, but first and foremost, John 3.16 says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can go to heaven. And he talked specifically about this verse and also John 3.17. Um, and he does talk about uh, just how you can get into heaven pretty much. It's just, it isn't by good works. It isn't by doing really good things. That's not why we do those things, right? I know faith is that without good works, but... That's not how you get into heaven. According to God, how you get into heaven is how you get salvation is believe in Jesus Christ. And once you know that, it's, you know, I feel, I feel like it's the most important thing that you will ever uh, know. Um, all of us have the same destination, right? All of us. Everybody watching, everybody alive has the same destination. One day, we're all heading towards death, right? We're all going to pass one day. No one's excluded from that so on our way or on a destination the best thing you can do is get closer to God because you're gonna live uh, a better life if you get closer with God um, but we're all basically um, leading we're heading towards death it doesn't matter what religion you're from it doesn't matter what job you have it doesn't matter what religion you claim to be all of us are gonna pass right and what the Bible tells us when it happens is there's two options there isn't multiple options. There's literally only two options according to the Bible. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. If not, you're going to go to hell. And that's as as coarse or as harsh as that sounds. That's what the Bible says. So when we Christians share John 3.16 and tell you about Jesus Christ, it's not because we're, you know, God shows up and he pats us on the back and says, good job, you're winning some over. It's like, it's nothing we do, it's what God does, right? We do it because we know that those are the two options and we want everybody to know about it because we don't want anybody to go to hell. We want everybody to go to heaven. And that's why we share that news with everybody. Friends, family, strangers, it's like, hey, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can go to heaven. If not, you're going to go to hell and that's not somewhere you want to be if you really understood what it is. Um... So that's that's why we share it. But definitely hope that you guys uh, check out the sermon that Gilbert talked about the Sunday. It's a good one. Um, but while we're alive, until that day, right, until death comes, we live for Christ and we can get closer to God. There's different ways that you can get closer to God. And the reason you want to get closer to God is because you're going to live a better life that way. Um, right, um, you're gonna have if you get closer to God, you're gonna have peace. You know, He's gonna He's the Prince of Peace. He gives you peace beyond understanding, even through very difficult times. He gives us peace, even while I have this, you know, paralysis on my face. Um, I know it's temporary, but He's giving me peace about it. I'm not stressed out or worried about it. I, you know, I accept it, and I know God's gonna make it go away one day. And if not, if I, you know, pass like this. I'm okay with that because God gives me that peace beyond understanding. People are like, how could you not be worried about it? And I'm just not because God gives me that peace. Um, and it's in his hands. He's going to choose whatever he's going to choose for my life, whether it's this or whatever other thing he has lined up for me. Um, but I, I like James 4, 8. Uh, and that talks about getting closer to God. And if we get closer to God... God gets closer to us. So it's a two-way, right? Kind of like a two-way communication. As we get closer, he gets closer. Um, and how do you get closer? You get closer by, uh, again, reading your Bible, praying, and worship. Those are the ways that I try to get closer to God. Um, Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Again, God is going to help you in life if you get closer to him. So you want to get closer to him in 2024. 
you want to seek him and seek his face. Um, so again, the way we get closer is the Bible, we pray and we worship, right? And there's a saying, which I've never liked, but I guess it kind of gets the point across, which is we can kill two birds with one stone. I got to think of something different, but because <laughs> that doesn't sound good, but that's, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the Bible, which is one of the things, but it's going to be about prayer, which is the other thing. So it's kind of like doing two things at once. Um, so, um, how to pray people ask Jesus Christ and you're not going to get a better answer than that, right? Is how do we pray? And Jesus answered to a crowd of people. This is how you pray. And you can find that in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So again, you're not going to find a better answer. This is Jesus Christ himself saying, this is how you pray, right? Matthew 6, 9 through 13 says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, are, as, as we have forgiven our debt, debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, I learned the version that says trespassers, but I guess this one says debtors. Um, there's different versions, but this one I think is NLT. Either way, it just talks about, you know, forgiving others um, the way that, you know, you want God to forgive you. Um, but there's four points. I don't think Jesus Christ meant, like, read this. Every time you want to pray the right way, you should go to this verse and read it over and over and over. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he was just like, here's how you should pray. And then you take kind of, like, the, the format of it. Um, and you can read it. You know, it's good to read it. But I think the format is basically four points, right? Four, four things that you do in prayer. Um, number one is you praise, right? The first thing he says is, how would be your name? Uh, praised be your name. So the first thing I like to do in prayer when, and there's different types of prayer. Sometimes you give a quick prayer. Sometimes you give a more formal prayer. This is more when I'm getting into like a deep prayer with them. I start off with praising them. Just God, I praise you. I thank you for everything that you've done. Um, so that's number one is you praise. And you can remember this by pray, P-R-A-Y. The first thing is praise. The second thing is repent. Right? You say, God, please forgive me for my sins because we're not perfect and we sin. Um, number three is you ask God for things, right? You say, God, help me with health, with finances, or whatever you're asking them for. And then the fourth thing that you do is your will be done at the end. It says, you know what, your will be done. Um, the reason we say that is because, let's say I ask for a super fast car, and I'm like, God, give me the super fast car. And, you know, let's say I get tickets in it or I wreck it and I get really hurt bad in it. Then I would probably say, God, I wish I hadn't never got that car. Right. And I think that's why we add that at the end is let your will be done. God, I really want this fast car. But if I'm going to get in a car accident and, and get really hurt, I don't want that car. Right. So let your will be done. And I think that's why we put it in, ha in his hands at the end. God, let your will be done. Um, because he's far more intelligent than we are. He knows exactly what's going to happen. So if we leave it in his hands, he's going to give us what we need in our lives. Um, first and foremost, to be saved, but also to, you know, maybe to help others. Maybe the, the struggles or pains that we go through um, help us so that when somebody else goes through it in the future, we'll be like, yeah, I remember I went through that. Whenever I talk to people about this uh, face paralysis, they're like, oh, yeah, I went through that like 10 years ago or whatever. And, and it helps to know that they went through it and they got over it. So sometimes going through something is going to help other people. And that's that's a good thing. So that's why we thank God for the things that we get. And also, um, there's a few other, there's a lot of verses about praying, but I, I, I kind of picked a few of them that I like. Um, the second, this other one is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So it says to pray in every situation. You're going to Wally and you're going to park. God, let me find a good parking space. You're going to take a test at school or at work or whatever. God, I hope I score a really good score at this test. Whatever it is, you can always pray God. And it doesn't always have to be that formal format. That's just when I want to get into like, a, you know, praying for an hour or just a really formal way. 
Um, but when it's something quick, I'm always like just a conversation like, God, help me with this right test. God, uh, thank you for, you know, I got this job today. You know, we had a praise report that somebody got a, a job, which is good. And we were like, praise God, you know, thank God for that. So there's different ways you can approach God in a regular, just like a friend. Sometimes it's really formal. You go have a cup of coffee. You, you know, you take, you schedule it in your schedule. It's really formal. And sometimes it's just passing by. Hey, how you doing, man? Like a conversation. So I think God appreciates that. And he, there's, uh, there's several verses that say, always pray to God about everything and anything. Um, just always open the line of communication. It's like if you wake up, you call him in the morning on your cell phone, and then you just leave the call open. And throughout the day, you're like, thank you, God, for this, God, you know, you just have a conversation with them all day. Um, this uh, Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, keep, and, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So again, it's... I've heard this example, it always stuck in my head. It says, um, it's kind of like when a kid asks a parent if, if, for something like a toy, God, l l buy me this toy, buy me this toy. If they just kept doing it over and over, you know, the parent might be like, hey, you know what, I'm just going to buy this kid the toy so he leave me alone, right? Um, I don't think we bother God when we pray, but in a way it's just repeatedly asking him. He's finally going to be like, okay, yeah, I'll give it to you um, if it's his will, right? So again, just keep doing it every day. Um, and, and he's going to hear you. Um, and if he wants to, sometimes he gives it to you right away. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But he likes it when we continually pray every day, all day. Um, so those are the, the verses that I like about prayer. Um, and, and again, you seek God by through prayer and through uh, reading your Bible. But the third one is my favorite. Um, I like reading the Bible, right? It's not that I don't like it, but I really love worship. Worship at church, when I listen to my music, on my headphones, when I'm working out. Um, whenever I, um, you know, sometimes I just take an hour and I just, I I sit there and I just listen to worship songs and I worship God um, with the door closed in my, in my room. Um, so it just depends on how you do it, but especially at church, right? That's kind of where everybody's doing it. Um, but I love worship. Um, you know, I, I, I feel blessed. I thank God because I have felt the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, I know it was the Holy Spirit because it's like any other feeling. It's like euphoric. It's, you know, it's the best feeling. It's indescribable. It's great joy. It's happiness at the same time. Um, and when I worship, I love it. I raise my hands and I worship and I praise. I don't always just read the words. Sometimes I don't even read the words on, on the screen. Sometimes I just, with my own words, I'm like, I praise you, God. I exalt you. Um, I come up with my own words, and it's just me. Um, and, and I like to imagine God on his throne, and I like to be like in the crowd of a bunch of people, millions of people, and then I raise my hands. And then I don't read the words. I just, with my heart, I just imagine worshiping him. And, and I get into this euphoric feeling. It's, it's great. Um, but that's... You know, if you've ever wanted to feel the Holy Spirit, that's, I don't know if that's how you will, but that's how I've felt it multiple times. It's happened to me more than once when I'm sitting there worshiping, raising my hands, yelling out, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit hits me. Boom. And then I feel it in my heart, and then I, my wife notices it because I just sit down and I sit there. And I don't know why, but I just start like bawling, and I'm just like sitting there, and, and everybody, I feel like everybody's looking at me. And I've told God, like, I want to feel the Holy Spirit where I don't, where that doesn't happen, where I don't sit there and cry like a little baby. <laughs> like, um, But it's just, you know, that's just how it makes me feel. Um, but, you know, if you check out the, um, the one in Spanish that I did on Tuesday, I was sitting here describing that and because I got into it, I guess, I don't know, the Holy Spirit hit me. And I just got all quiet. And you can kind of see my reaction where it's like the Holy Spirit just hits you. Um, I've always seen, you know, people on TV that start dancing around and, and yelling out, speaking in tongues, what they say. I'm not saying that's, you know, that's not true, but that doesn't happen to me. What happens to me, and I, I just get this overwhelming feeling, and I just get all quiet and sit there, and, and you know, have to, it takes me a minute to collect myself. But, um, but again, if you've ever wanted to feel the Holy Spirit, that's how I've done it. It's just through worship. 
Um, and and one of my favorite people in the Bible is David. I think David was, uh, he loved to, there's verses that say he loved to worship God, he loved to dance and play instruments for God. Um, that's why, that's where that song is, if you ever heard it, Dance Like David Danced. Um, but one of my favorite ver uh, sections of the Bible is where David, the tabernacle is coming in, and he wants to like just welcome it. He's so thankful for it. Um, that he goes out into the streets and starts dancing and I think he ripped off his clothes his cloak or whatever he had on and Then his wife even calls him out and says man. You kind of look like you know, like I I, he says like strange or something You can see the verses in 2nd Samuel 6 21 through 22 um, It's you know, it's a whole section that talks about it, but um, He's just sitting there dancing for God and his response to his wife telling him he looks like like a fool kind of is he's like, I don't care how I look. And, you know, I'll be willing to look like that even in front of all these people because I'm worshiping God. So, and that's how I feel at church. Yeah, I, I personally, I'm a shy kid, so I do get a little embarrassed when I raise my hands and all that, but I, I do it anyways because I love worshiping God and I don't care if people look at me. I don't care if I'm sitting there bawling. The, the feeling is overwhelming. Like, I don't regret it and I love it. And I hope that next time you're sitting there at church that you do the same thing. Lift up your hands. Who cares if everybody's looking at you? Um, and you worship God with your heart. And I hope that, I really hope that if you go and you ask God to let him feel the Holy Spirit, man. I hope. I hope that you feel the Holy Spirit. I hope that you feel that feeling that it just hits you and you're like, that's the Holy Spirit. I hope that for everybody. I hope that you go to church this Sunday, wherever church, and that you ask God to let you feel the Holy Spirit. And as you worship, I hope that it hits you like that. Um, this Sunday we'll be at church, 9.30 a.m. Uh, 9.30 a.m. in Spanish, 11 o'clock in English. Hope to see you there. If not, just go to any church. Worship God. If you're not going to go to church for whatever reason, I hope that you close the doors in your room and that you worship God and that you, uh, you know, that you ask him to let you feel the Holy Spirit. Um, but it's what I have for tonight. I hope that you guys read that verse and I hope that, you know, you get you take 2024 to focus on getting closer to God. And the more you get closer to him, he promises that he's going to get closer to you. And I hope that's a great year for you as far as getting closer to God. Hope you guys have a good night and God bless you from Familia Church.